Hey, do you ever look at your closet and think you have nothing to wear? Or is it just me? It's not just me, right? This is why I can't believe I didn't discover Armoire clothing rentals earlier. With an Armoire membership, I can now build the perfect wardrobe with high quality brands that I wouldn't normally think I could afford, such as Philip Lim, Monique Lulier, and Marnie. Doesn't it just sound fancy? To get started, all you have to do is take a five minute style quiz and select items from your dynamic personalized closet. The styles show up at your door in as little as two days. And then when you're ready for new clothes, boom, swap them out for more new to you styles. I recently I recently rented a pale lime green leather blazer from Alice and Olivia. You may have seen it on our Instagram stories. I am obsessed. It's so perfect. If you're like me who doesn't want to spend all that time putting together a look, but also loves looking stylish. Right now, our listeners can give Armoire a try and get up to 50% off their first month. That's up to $125 off. Just visit armoire.style slash datable. That is armoire.style. That's spelled A-R-M-O-I-R-E dot style slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E to get up to 50% off your first month and never worry about what to wear again. Try Armoire today. Hi, I'm Yui Xu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. Oh, hey, you're back for another episode of Brunch Talk because you want us to dissect your burning dating questions, and we are happy to do so. And we have a really good one today, one that we get on our plate quite a bit, like the little... We don't play favorites, <laughs> though. They're all good. They They're are all, all good. equally they good. Are. <laughs> <laughs> but this one we've heard many of you ask over and over again, how do I get over being friend-zoned? And for more context, I have a huge crush on one of my guy friends, and I told him about it. He said he only likes me as a friend. A new girl recently entered our friend group, and now they're hooking up. I was incredibly hurt and told my guy friend I wanted a no contact period. Any advice on how to maintain this period without slipping? How long should it last? I've been really struggling as I want to talk to him. Oh, this is why it's so hard to mix friendship with feelings. Once you've been friend zoned, like when someone tells you they don't see you as anything more than a friend, it's a little harder to get out of the friend zone because they've already established that's a boundary they're establishing. And as a friend, you should be able to respect that boundary. So I think in this situation, you have to kind of respectfully remove yourself out of any future situations that could hurt you. And that would be hanging out with him and his new girl or any other girl that he comes in contact with. There's nothing that you can do to avoid the situation from happening. Right. He didn't do anything wrong by being with a new person either, because it sounds like you both had this conversation and it wasn't a reciprocal like in that way. And it sounds like you maintained a friendship until this new person came along. Yeah. And this is so hard because usually when we go on a date with someone and then they reject us, we never have to see them again. (laughs) Yeah. They can date whoever they want after and it doesn't matter because it's not in front of our face. So I love that you did take take a back seat and told him like you have to like stop talking this person also mentioned that they were like texting a lot too so it sounds like they did have quite a friendship but it is hard when one person has feelings and the other doesn't so i think first of all like it's good that you recognize that like i don't want to be in this situation i don't want to be like out with a group of friends see him with another girl, at least right now. I think over time, time does tend to heal some of this stuff and you can maybe start to see that you just aren't the right fit. So maybe it's taking this time apart and looking at like, what is it that doesn't make us actually compatible? Because at the end of the day, you're not because he didn't want that. So taking him off that pedestal and like actually looking at like, why we're better off as friends, that could help you get back to that point faster than if you continue to dwell on him. Again, easier said than done, but taking that time as much as you need, I'd love to give you like a hard, fast number, but unfortunately, like that's just not really how it works. Like it's going to depend on how fast you can move over this and like see him as a friend again, or maybe it won't be that way. Right. Honestly, maybe you'll never see him again. Maybe you won't have a friendship with him again. 
sometimes with these friendship crushes, you realize you only hang out with them because you have a crush on them. Right. Maybe there wasn't much of a friendship to begin with. And I would also say you want to be with someone who chooses you. So by virtue of that statement, you're are already barking at the wrong tree because he did not choose you. If you do think there is something salvageable about this friendship, I think deep and hard about this. Is there a true friendship here? Is it a deep friendship? Is it a friendship that you can't afford to lose? Then I do understand the no contact period, which then just means this is on you. I mean, he is going to keep living his life. He doesn't need to adjust any behaviors. It's really on you. Can you accept the fact that he's going to be dating people and you're going to be witnessing that? That time period is absolutely 100% on you. Only you know the answer. But if you find that this friendship wasn't that deep to begin with, and you're kind of like, Eh, maybe I was really hanging out with him because I had a crush on him. Then maybe it's worth exploring, like phasing out this friendship. Yeah. Again, it's hard for us to give you like a hard, fast time rule, but I know you're looking for one. So I'm going to give you something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so my take is what if you just take 30 days? Keep up this no contact. I know it's again, it's hard. It's kind of like similar to no contact with an ex. There's something that comes back and you're like, yeah, I want to text them so bad. But you do have to pull it back and say, is there someone else I can text this to instead? Or jot it down in a notebook. Something that kind of distracts that trait of thought of like wanting to immediately text that person. In this 30 days, don't just ignore the situation, but really get to the root of what we've been talking about of what is it about this friendship? And then you'll be able to see like, was I just drawn to them because I actually had a crush on them? Or is it actually right that maybe we are better as friends and not? So you can kind of get that clarity in this time frame, which of those camps you fall into. And I think after that, it'll become a lot more clear what the next action is, mm -hmm. whether you can go back to being friends or you're going to find new people. I mean, the reality is like, I hate saying this. I like, in theory, the premise of girls and guys being friends, hetero in this case. I feel like I've definitely gone through guy friends a lot more than girlfriends. Like I've had the same girlfriends mm -hmm. for a long, long time where guys kind of cycled in and out. And it wasn't always because like someone had a crush on someone, but maybe someone did in the group. <laughs> there was like something lingering. Yeah. And it was because the friendship wasn't super strong to begin with. So yeah, like look at what it is and what makes sense for you and this person. 30 days makes perfect sense to me because then that is a concrete number you can yeah. be very disciplined around. Also, make sure he's aware of that. <laughs> it's yeah. not a one-sided thing. Like Sounds like she did tell him, which is good. Well, make sure he's aware of the 30-day yeah, uh, no contact I period. See. Right. It's very specific because why I say that is because if he were to text you within the 30 days, it means that he doesn't respect your boundaries, mm. which in turn kind of means he doesn't respect your friendship. He's probably like, oh, she didn't really mean the 30 days or she doesn't really have boundaries. It's fine if I just text her about this random meme, whatever it may be. So I think that's also another way to look at your friendship. And the 30 days is also important for you to think this is not a time for you to give him a chance to miss you. This is such a mistake so many of us make. We're like, oh, it's no contact. Yes. So that he'll realize he's really secretly in love with me and that he's going to text me and tell me I'm the love of his life. Get that out of your mind because that only happens in rom-coms. It does not happen in real life. The 30 days is purely for you to not have contact with him so you can think more clearly about what you want out of this friendship. Yeah. And you can look at your text messages. Are you sending memes about nothing or are you having deep conversations? Like that will also give you intel. Like were you like flirting or were you having like real, you know, friendship talks? I do want to go in a little more. What do you do when your friend groups are entwined? Because I think that makes it a little more complicated. Mm. But before we do, let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. Spring is in the air, and you know what adds an extra spring to my step? Our partners at Via Hemp. 
Need to chill out after a long day? There's a Via Gummy for that. Dealing with anxiety or stress? There's a gummy for that too. Want to set the mood in the bedroom? There's a gummy for that called High Love. Via also carries a wide array of other gummies with it without THC, ranging from zero to 100 milligrams. I've been struggling to stay focused lately, so I was excited to try out their Flow State gummies. These felt like a good bet to me too, because they were non-psychoactive and THC-free. But they definitely delivered, boosting my daily energy and focus. So whether you're a 2 milligram or a 50 milligram user, you can shop through their website for any strength and effects. So head to Via Hemp and use the code DATABLE to receive 15% off and one free sample of their award-winning gummies, 21+. plus. That's V-I-I-A hemp.com and use the code datable at checkout. Please support our show and tell them that we sent you. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. Living with ADHD can be a challenge and dating with ADHD is definitely a challenge. We've heard many of you say, but finding the right care and proper tools needed to succeed can be life-changing. Done is an online ADHD care platform that can get you all the resources you need to help manage your ADHD. Unlock your path to better focus with Done. Take a free one-minute assessment and book an appointment with a licensed ADHD clinician as soon as the next day. Get continuous care, insurance coverage, and 24-7 care team support and pharmacy co-pays as low as $0. And because May is Mental Health Awareness Month, you can get 50% off your first consultation. That's just $99. Visit get.donefirst.com slash podcast before the end of the month to take advantage of this deal. That's get.donefirst.com slash podcast. Done. Turn ADHD into strength. This episode is sponsored by 310 Nutrition. Okay, be honest. How good are you at hydrating? I personally have a tracker, which constantly reminds me that I am not hydrating enough. But now I rely on 310 Nutrition for everything from water hydrators, which make your water delicious and nutritious, to refreshingly healthy lemonade mixes, and they're all in one shakes. Whatever your personal goals may be from getting hydrated to healthier habits, 310 Nutrition is satisfying, guilt-free, and a helpful tool to whatever goals you have for your health. And we just got these great products from them as a sponsor of the show. And I was immediately drawn to the lemonade mixes because one, they have no sugar. And two, how refreshing does this sound? My favorite is the blackberry flavor lemonade, which is such a treat. Right now, 310 is celebrating a new year of goals with the code DATABLE and giving our listeners 50% off, up to $100 off your first order. With so many sample packs, new products, it's really fun and easy to put together an order or start a subscription on products you know you'll use. Go to 310nutrition.com and use the code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E right now for 50% up to $100 for your first order. That's 310nutrition.com and use the code DATABLE. So I've definitely had this situation before where I had a friends with benefits. It was a little different. It wasn't a friend that friend zoned, but they still didn't want a real relationship. So there's a lot of similarities. (laughs) And what was really hard with this is it was hard to untangle it because it wasn't just this person. It was an entire group of friends that was caught into this person. So if I said, I want 30 days away from this person, that meant that I could be taking time away from other friends too. I had some ways and tactics that I went about doing it, but I'm curious, UA, like your thoughts. How do you navigate this too if it's not just the one person, but entire group? There are some rules around hanging out as a group. I think the 30-day no contact could be one-on-one. Yeah. But if I see you out and about with our friend circle, I'll still say hi. I'll be courteous to you. So maybe that's one carve out. You could be so hurt by seeing him with someone else that maybe it is good to just not hang out with this group at all because they're going to be a constant reminder of him for you. Yeah. I mean, so much has to do with your situation. Like, do you have other friend groups? How good of friends are you with these people? Like, it's very nuanced. But I think, like, for my situation, like, I found, like, the girls in the group. I guess I was like, (laughs) who are they? There was the girls in the group. And it did cause, like, a little divide. So I'm not sure if I'm, like, fully, like, this is the tactic you should take. But at the end of the day, those were my closer friends for the most part. And there were some guys, too, that fell into that. And 
it did ultimately divide the group, but it did make it a little easier to like move on because I was really just there with the people I was closer with and they weren't necessarily the people he was closer with. I wasn't necessarily like asking someone that was close with both of us to choose sides. Like I didn't go there and I don't think that's fair. But I think in every friend group, there's going to be certain people that are closer to others. So maybe it's just like having different activities that aren't the whole group or subsets of the group more. Yeah, it's a great point because this will be very clear whether he's a hangout friend or a real close friend. Yeah. And when you start to see that divide in the group, you'll know who are the close friends that you can just spend more one-on-one time with. You don't need to hang out with everybody as a group. And who are more the activity partners? And that's more of the casual group, maybe just go out and don't need to have any deep conversations. This will be very telling. Yeah. And I mean, the reality, like I hate saying this because it's not a good story, but that group kind of did blow up. <laughs> like, I'm not really friends with anyone in that group anymore. And this person isn't either. It's just like the whole group kind of disintegrated. But I think at the end of the day, it also allowed me to find people that were actually more in line with the types of friends I wanted. Mm-hmm. So I think net net, it was a positive. And you know what? The reality is certain groups of friends, especially I think what it was with this group, it was, it was very much a going out group. Mm. And a lot of that was centered around this person too. So I started to just outgrow the purely going out part and they still wanted to do that. So there was like a little bit of a divide for that reason. But ultimately, like you start to get more clear about like, what is it that I even want in a friendship? Yeah. And you can see that maybe this served a place of time, but it's not meant to be forever either. Oh, that's so true. This will give you that clarity you're looking for too, because maybe you'll realize, oh, I have a crush on him because I see him all the time Yeah, because he's always there, you know, or you realize, okay, I want a version of him in a partner, maybe not the entire him. And I'm going to look for that in a partner. But on top of everything that I like about him, I'm going to choose someone who chooses me back. So imagine like how much more valuable that relationship will be. So use this 30 days to sit down and think, what is it that I like about him? Do I see partner potential in him? Or is it just purely FaceTime? And then how can I translate that into my own love life? Yeah. And we're not telling you like blow up all your friendships and your life, anything <laughs> like that. But 30 days in the grand scheme of things, especially if your friends like really, you know, they are your real friends, they'll understand what you're going through too. And they won't take it personally if you're not at every group hang, et cetera. But you'll start to find like other interests too. Yes. And other things that, and maybe date other people, you know, go on dates. It could have got really comfortable with this person because you had the crush on them. Yeah. I think pushing you out of your like comfort zone here is actually going to be a positive. And, you know, best case scenario is you move on, you could be friends, and it's not a big deal at all. But if that doesn't happen, then maybe you just accept and appreciate for what it was in this moment of time. Yes. Like I talk about that group of friends, like I still look back on that time fondly, even though those people aren't in my life anymore. It's not like it was a failed experience. It was just a blip of time that isn't where I am currently. You got to really congratulate yourself on these moments of gaining that clarity of growth. And one thing we didn't actually do is congratulate you for Doing it. telling yeah. your crush that you have a, a crush lot of people on him. Do so that. many people <laughs> No, so many people hide it and then they build up that like resentment and then ugh, it just gets really ugly. So thank goodness you told him how you felt, which means you were asking for answers. Yeah. You got the answers and now you can take that attitude into your dating life. Like, don't sit in the dark about anything. Ask for the answers. You know, I had a friend in college. I didn't come out and tell him I did not have the guts to do it, but word got out to him through the grapevine. Mm. And it was awkward for like a couple days. And then we got over it. And like, honestly, I lost the feelings as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad though, there was maybe there was something like liberating a little of just putting it out there. So maybe this will all blow over. And it will be for the best. And, you know, if it's not, the fact that you can look back in 10 years or whatever and be like, I put it out there. Like, there's no what ifs. 
that is something to be super proud about, even if it wasn't the response that you were looking for. And then taking this as a learning of what was it that drew you to this person in the 30 days. I think it's why are we maybe better as friends, but also what qualities do I want in a partner that chooses me to? There was a reason you were drawn to this person and using that as a data point is going to help in the future as well. You're going to learn and grow so much from this. <laughs> Thank you so much for this question. See, you asked for answers from us as well. So you're doing all the right things. And for anybody that's sitting in the dark about something you're going through, you can get some answers. We've talked to thousands of daters about what they're going through. We can give you all the data points and our own opinions about what may be happening. So send us your dating questions. You can email us hello at datablepodcast.com. You can DM us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast is the handle, or you can leave us a rating review in Apple Podcasts, give us five stars, and then in the body of your review, ask your question there. It's anonymous, so nobody will ever know, but we'll know because we're going to be answering it <laughs> right away. Or leave us a comment on YouTube because we are now there as a video oh, podcast right. as well. Oh, I keep forgetting. I feel like we need something more visually interesting like this cup. <laughs> every episode we will throw an easter egg in something random that you can only see <laughs> so visually random. so make sure to come over to youtube if you're not there yet or if you're a youtuber and you want to also listen to us as you walk as you do whatever clean you know you can do that on youtube podcasts as well we're everywhere <laughs> <laughs> with that we're going to be everywhere next week as well so we'll see you back here next week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes and our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay dateable. Stay dateable.